Many video game universes are carefully crafted over years of painstaking effort, often by hundreds of skilled designers and writers. For instance, titles like Skyrim contain many in-game tomes to help build the extensive lore. From Software incorporates elusive yet enthralling environmental storytelling, and The Witcher uses the original novels to expand on the rich and colourful narrative. Oh yeah, and some games just let Shrek skateboard alongside Tony Hawk and Steve-O. Do a kickflip! Yo, do a kickflip! These bizarre cameos stick with us over the years, with some being tongue-in-cheek and others proving downright perplexing. Mostly, they aren't meant to be taken seriously, but it's certainly amusing to envisage how some of the characters actually fit into the world of their chosen title. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 more weird character cameos in video games. Number 10. Duke Nukem. Blood. These days, it's difficult to remember that Duke's characterization actually started out as a disgruntled TV viewer who agreed to help save the Earth under the premise that he could take revenge on Dr. Proton for interrupting his favourite soap opera. Although he began as a mostly silent character, the third instalment transformed him into an overconfident and aggressive pillar of political incorrectness and hyper-masculinity. He's clearly an exaggerated homage to Hollywood's old action heroes like Dirty Harry and Arnold Schwarzenegger, with many of his lines taken from Army of Darkness, but it seems like outstanding machismo couldn't stop Duke from getting his comeuppance in blood, the 1997 first-person shooter developed by Monolith Productions. He finally found himself in quite a pickle when he ended up as a mutilated corpse, strung up by a chain yet still sprightly enough to utter his favourite catchphrase if the player gives him a swift jab with something pointy. It definitely seems like big biceps and sarcastic one-liners weren't quite enough to survive against Blood's Dark Horde. In the words of Duke himself, Another day, another disembowelment. Number 9. Negan, Tekken 7. Fighting game rosters are increasing to the point that soon enough they will reach critical mass, collapse in on themselves, and cause the end of the universe as we know it. These skilled fighters represent all manner of cultures and fighting styles. You've got everything from Brazilian capoeira to fictional variants of Goju Ryu karate, and even bears and cyborgs flaunting their own crazy styles. Tekken has always been about believability regarding the actual combat, aside from the aforementioned bears and cyborgs, of course and the devils. Okay, okay, it's not 100% accurate, but it's got a firm foundation. Either way, there's no blood, nor are there any insane fatality moves like in Mortal Kombat. So this begs the question, why on earth is Negan from The Walking Dead a playable character? Pissing our pants yet? He's charismatic, sure, but he's also a lover of abject violence and torture. He's used Lucille, his beloved baseball bat swathed in barbed wire, to murder beloved characters, and when he's not battering people to death, he usually opts to iron out any dissension in his ranks with, well, a literal white-hot iron. He has no extensive technical skill and simply relies on brute strength and savagery to outperform the likes of Tekken staples such as Jin Kazama and Martial Law. He has no thematic link to the context of the franchise, and he definitely isn't a seasoned martial arts practitioner, but we can't deny how utterly satisfying he is in battle. He's witty, charming, and his attacks feel meaty and effective, just don't expect him to have any acrobatic kicks or kung fu combos. Even here at Triple Jump, we are all Negan. Boom! Lights out! Number 8. Final Fantasy Characters – Mario Hoops 3-on-3 three three. Final Fantasy heroes and villains are possibly some of the most well-travelled of all video game characters. We've seen Little Big Planet's sack boys dressed as Sephiroths, Chocobos running around in Torbal 2, Cloud hauling his Buster Sword around in Super Smash Bros, and there's also a little crossover series called Kingdom Hearts. Not sure if you've heard of it. For some of FF's other icons, such as Moogles and Cactors, as well as fundamental job tropes like the Black Mage and Ninja, it seems like all those hours grinding Gold Saucer minigames earned them a feature in Mario Hoops 3 on 3, or Mario Slam Basketball in Europe if you want to get serious about this, alongside the famous mustachioed plumber himself. What makes this example particularly strange is the fact that there are no main characters to be seen, contrary to what usually happens with Final Fantasy cameos. It's also unexpected to see a white mage trying to shoot hoops when surely an acrobatic dragoon class would be perfect for those epic slam dunks if you ask me. I mean, come on! 
Number 7. Kratos – Shovel Knight At first glance, this nifty cameo seems like nothing more than a fun, senseless crossover. Sure, we get to see our beloved Shovel Knight face off against our favourite angry Spartan, and if we're lucky enough to defeat him, don some cool God of War-inspired armour afterwards. But this encounter is actually canon. Believe it or not, God of War 2018 director Corey Barlog confirmed the cameo is 100% canon and actually occurred during Kratos' journey to Scandinavia. True to his origins, he makes for a tough fight. Unlike other bosses in the original campaign, he has not two, but three different phases, each incorporating multi-hit combos with his iconic Blades of Chaos. Display enough skill or luck to best him and you're rewarded with the Grave Digger's Shovel, which, while having no use on its own, can be traded to the Armourer and reforged into the Armour of Chaos. The gear set is a free armour equip that also changed Shovel Knight's attack style to mirror Kratos' three-hit combo, even in mid-air, as well as being an awesome God of War crossover cosplay for the Valley's next Comic-Con. Number 6. Lars from Tekken, Naruto Shippuden, Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 Although his presence in the Naruto universe is never really explained, in the Tekken franchise, Lars is the half-Swedish, half-Japanese soldier with the Tekken Force, and is also the illegitimate son of Haihachi Mishima, half-uncle of Jin Kazama, half-brother to Kazuya Mishima, and adopted brother of Lee Cholan. While I catch my breath, let's take a look at how Naruto creator Masashi Kishimoto redesigned Lars to fit in alongside the game's ninja clans. Overall, the new design actually still harkens back to the original Tekken costume, with emphasis being placed on the lion iconography and use of a bold red colour scheme. However, if you thought Lars's hair was already anime enough, you're clearly wrong, because Kishimoto cranked that up to over 9,000 by swooping the golden locks into a big old crescent moon on top of Lars's head. As well as cosmetic changes, Ultimate Ninja Storm also tweaked Lars's skill set to further match the combat system and lore of the Naruto universe. He is shown to be extremely skilled in Taijutsu, the general empty-handed combat system, which he also combines with his chakra-based lightning release attack. Clearly, his special moves are just as shocking as his cameo appearance in this title. Number 5. Thanos – Fortnite Apparently there's this game called Fortnite, and it's a battle royale or something, and there was also this big movie called, um... Oh, what was it again? Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. Oh yeah, Avengers Endgame. Well, back when folks were still reeling from The Snap and parents were remortgaging their homes to pay for V-Bucks, although they probably still are, Marvel and Fortnite arranged a little crossover featuring the big purple lad who tried to wipe out 50% of all living creatures. No, not Grimace. Ah, not Milo from the Tweenies either. It's Thanos. It's Thanos. Thanos. He crashed the Battle Royale scene via a special mode wherein players could seek out the Infinity Gauntlet to become the Mad Titan and wreak havoc on the remaining puny mortals. We're still not sure how this impacts MCU canon, however, because we can actually see Thor and Korg still playing Fortnite in a post-snap version of 2023 during the events of Endgame. That kid on the TV just called me a dickhead again. It would probably be quite insensitive to still include Thanos in the game after he killed half of the population, but maybe Epic Games would still consider it if it could net them a few more loot box sales. Number 4. Leon and Claire Tricken Snowboarder, or Trick and Snow... I don't know, I don't know how it's pronounced. There's no telling what new zombie variants Umbrella Corporation are cooking up these days. We've seen zombie T-Rexes, giant leeches, a half-bat, half-insect hybrid, and even a stylish Italian executive. Well, uh, she actually turned into a tentacle tree, so just add it to the list of resi weirdness for now. Who knows? The next virus concoction might cause an outbreak of professional skier and arctic hair hybrids. So, our plucky protagonists need the skills to outmaneuver these new monstrosities in what better way than snowboarding? Luckily enough, Leon and Claire have had plenty of practice for this very situation when they appeared in 1999's Trick and Snowboarder. And hey, looking at the snowy environment of Resi 8's latest trailer, maybe we can hope to see some rad skills put to good use in the next spooky instalment. I'm sure it won't ruin the tone at all. You can do better than that. Number 3. Pyramid Head Super Bomberman R Right now, Dead by Daylight players are currently getting to grips with the powerhouse that is Pyramid Head. He's relentless, surprisingly fast, and has a nasty habit of trapping players in spiky cages instead of bothering to hook them like any other respectable killer. 
This crossover has stayed true to the vibe of Silent Hill, especially with the inclusion of its bleak new map. The ambiance is absolutely crushing, and Pyramid Head's onslaught is nothing less than horrifying. But this isn't his first rodeo for gaming cameos. 2017's Super Bomberman R included a chibified version of this iconic antagonist while still trying to adhere to some of the dark lore. Obviously, we don't see him trying to assault other monsters in this iteration, nor do we have to worry about the heavy, oppressive tone of the Silent Hill series. However, he's still an ominous opponent who clearly isn't meant to be taken lightly. Granted, they swapped his terrifying butcher sword in favour of a cuter wooden one, and he also has a Moogle-like pom-pom on his head, but it's definitely still freaky to see him stomping around after our terrified little bomber men. Number 2. Arden, Assassin's Creed Origins a list like this can't be complete without a couple of Final Fantasy-based entries, simply because of how prevalent their character cameos really are. Honestly, they get everywhere. Developers simply can't keep them out. It's like Spider Season, but with big swords and crazy hairstyles. This franchise crossover began with FF15's Assassin's Festival, where it knocked and the gang were able to attend a celebratory event and even get their hands on some cool new threads. It was handled quite well, all things considered, but the same can't be said for the Assassin's Creed Origins counterpart. It's just a bit sudden and odd, to be honest. Of course, it's cool for fans of Final Fantasy, but surely it would leave anyone else wondering why their camel now looks like a giant chicken. It's a short quest with no combat and just one puzzle. Basically, upon entering a strange tomb, Bayek briefly encounters Ardin before Bahamut decides to interfere. Unfortunately, there's no context or flair to the questline, quite unlike the FF15 side of the crossover, and Ardin definitely looks a little out of place in the setting of ancient Egypt. After all, assassins require stealth and hidden weaponry, and Final Fantasy has never been shy about its bombastic designs and impossible swords. Swords. Sure, it's a fun one for fans, but there definitely isn't anything stealthy about the Masamune or Gunblade, is there? Number 1. Ariana Grande – Final Fantasy Brave Exvius So far, we've seen the standard cameos by other video game characters and even a famous movie and comic book villain, but you know what we're really lacking? Pop stars in our JRPGs. There's no denying that the J-pop and K-pop phenomenon is featured in a lot of anime and even video games, so we aren't surprised if the poppy aesthetic appears in these types of titles. However, FF Brave Exvius honestly came out of nowhere with its revelation that singer Ariana Grande was to appear as a special character in their mobile RPG. By participating in the Dangerous Woman event, players could recruit the bunny-eared Dangerous Ariana to their team of heroes. Described as a beautiful singer from a distant world, she's actually a powerful addition to any party. Continuing with the event will enable the player to evolve Ariana into her final and most deadly form, of course, after which all enemies will undoubtedly fall against the onslaught of her Touch It Limit Break. Since this first appearance, she's also appeared as Chic Ariana, Sportive Ariana, and even Charming Kitty Ariana, so expect a full list titled 10 Ariana Grande Appearances in FFBE very soon. And that's our list, but who would you like to see traversing dimensions into another video game universe? Kazuma Kiryu throwing down some moves in Just Dance? Perhaps the Xenomorph crashing with the Meteor in Stardew Valley? Why not make your own cameo appearance in the comments below and let us know what crossovers you'd like to see next. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.